Okay, last bit on the exercises for chapter six, and then I'm going to do a separate video on some exam questions. So in the previous video, we dealt with the idea of a triangle inside a circle um, having a right angle if AC was a diameter. And now what we're going to look at is this second one that we have over here. So I have said, given three points or a triangle, we can find the center of the circumcircle. Now, these are the three points that we may be given here, here, and here, or we may be told to them as a triangle. And I'm hoping what you can identify is that these red lines that I've drawn in here are actually some perpendicular bisectors. So this red line, although it doesn't look perfectly perpendicular, is a perpendicular bisector of this side of the triangle. And this red line here is a perpendicular bisector of this side of the triangle. So the way that we could find the center of the circle is by finding the equation of the perpendicular bisectors of two different sides, because we know the perpendicular bisectors are going to pass through the center. And if I know that they are both passing through the center, then where those two lines intersect, which is this bit I'm writing about down here, find the point of intersection of the two bisectors, that would end up being the center of the circle. Now, obviously, if you wanted to find out the equation of the circle, you could then find out a radius as well. Now, you don't need to do all three perpendicular bisectors, but in theory, if we're concentrating on this line running along the top, if we did the perpendicular bisector of that line as well, it would also pass through the centre of the circle. So all three of the perpendicular bisectors would go through the centre, but we actually only need two of them to show that it's going to be the centre. So this is the one that we're going to be using here. And we're going to try and just take it really, really easy with how we answer these questions, because there can be quite a lot of information. So it says the points A, B and C lie on the circumference of a circle. Determine the equation of the circle. Now, I just wanted to quickly point something out here. We've been told three coordinates. If you were told just two coordinates, would it be possible to work out the equation of the circle that they passed through? Well, and hopefully you're going to realise that it would not be possible because you could draw a circle that looked like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Let's see if I can get this here. You could draw a circle that went through them both like this, but equally you could draw a circle that went through them like this, or you could do an even one that went somewhere in between like this. OK, so you could have many, many different circles. But as soon as you have three points, you really are fixed. You can only have that one circle that goes through all three of them. So that's why we need to have three of them to be able to find this. Now, I'm going to do a sketch of this one. Um, and this one it might be useful to do a bit more of an accurate kind of sketch. But generally, it would be sufficient just to draw a circle and just go like A, B, C, and then to start thinking to yourself, OK, well, here are two of my chords, and I know that the perpendicular bisector of this and the perpendicular bisector of this, they're going to meet at the centre. But this one you might find a bit more useful because A and B are kind of easy to sketch. It might be sensible to put them in roughly the right kinds of places. So doesn't matter if you don't put them in these perfect places. If A is 0, 2, it's over here. If B is 2, 0, then it's over here. And then C is going to be somewhere else over here. OK, not, not drawn very accurately for that. But there is C as 8, 18. And we've got this circle that we think is going to go through all of them. Wow points for that being the worst circle, but whatever. Um, and we're going to try and determine the equation of this circle. Now remember, for the equation of the circle, you need the centre and you need the radius. Well, we know how to find the centre now, because if we can find perpendicular bisectors, that is where they intersect. So to find the centre, what we're going to do is we are going to find two perpendicular bisectors, and then we're going to find their intersection. I'm just going to pull back this diagram on the previous slides. If we find this as a perpendicular bisector and this as a perpendicular bisector, their intersection is the centre of the circle. And then what we're going to do for the radius, the radius will be easier because we'll already know how to do that. OK, so here is AB and I'm going to try and find out what its perpendicular bisector is. Now, 
this is why I drew this sketch, because actually it's going to be super easy to find out what the equation of this line is. Now, by inspection, you might be able to tell me what the gradient of the line AB is. Clearly, it's going to be minus one. So the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is also going to be one. And it's clearly going to go through the origin. However, let's say you couldn't spot this. Let's just go through it really, really quick. So we will begin by working out the gradient AB, which is the change in Y. So that's going to be a, I'm going to do this one minus this one. So that's going to be a 2 minus 0 divided by a 0 minus 2. So that's 2 divided by minus 2, which is minus 1. So clearly the gradient of the perpendicular, I'm sure you've remembered us using that before, is 1. And I could also work out the midpoint coordinate that is here of AB. And that midpoint is just going to be the average of the x's and the average of the y's, which is clearly just a 1, 1. This is if you couldn't spot that it went through the origin. So the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB is going to be y minus y1, that's from the midpoint, equals m brackets, which is 1, x minus x1. So we get y minus 1 equals x minus 1. In other words, y equals x. And I'm going to highlight this because this one's really important for us to use later in the question. So y equals x. Now you can choose whichever one you want to do the perpendicular bisector of next. So I'm probably going to do, let's do this in purple so that it's a different one. I'm going to do c and a here. And so their perpendicular bisector, it's going to go like this. And then I know that they're going to intersect at the center. So I called that one's midpoint M. I'm going to call this one's midpoint N, just so it is a bit different. OK, so we're now going to work out the gradient of AC by doing the change in Y over the change in X. So the change in Y is 18 minus 2, and the change in X is 8 minus 0. So that becomes 16 over 8, which is 2. So the gradient of the perpendicular, I really should have done that perpendicular a little bit smaller is going to be minus a half, OK? Now we're going to work out the midpoint. So the midpoint is going to be the average of the x's, which is 8 plus 0 over 2, and the average of the y's, which is 18 plus 2 over 2. I'm just grabbing these from this information that I have here. So the midpoint of this is going to be 4, and 18 plus 2 is 20. 20 over 2 is 10. So let's just add in another page. So the equation of the perpendicular bisector of this time we're looking at AC would be y minus y1, this is from the midpoint, equals the perpendicular gradient x minus x1. So that is y minus 10 equals minus a half x, the negatives multiplying gives you plus 2. So y is equal to minus a half x plus 12. And I'm going to highlight this one again in blue because we've now got these two equations. This one is the red line that I've got on my diagram. This one is my purple line. And I'm going to find out where they intersect because that is going to give me, I can't really call it the C anymore, but it's going to give me the center of the circle if I find out where they intersect. So I'm going to solve y equals x and y equals minus a half x plus 12 simultaneously. So I'm just going to do substitution in here. So x equals minus a half x plus 12. I can just double everything or I can add that to the other side. So x plus a half x is 3 over 2x equals 12. So what's that going to be? Let's be really lazy. 12 multiplied by 2 divided by 3. So x equals 8. And because y is equal to x, that must mean that y is also equal to 8. So the centre is going to be 8, 8. OK, now we need to find out what the radius is. We were out here, we found out the centre. We now need to find out what the radius is. So this is where the diagrams can kind of come in handy. I want to find out the radius. So I want to find out either this one, this one, or this one. For me, I would say the easiest is probably going to just be to do C to A or C to B, uh, not C to A or C to B, sorry, the center to A or the center to B. 
So I'm going to work out what the radius is, and my radius is going to be the square root of, so the coordinates we're interested in are 8, 8, which is the center, and a, which is 0, 2. So the differences between the x's is 8, and the differences between the y's is 6. So I've got 64 plus 36, which is 100. So we get the square root of 100, which is just 10. So we're really nearly there now. So the equation of the circle is simply going to be x minus 8, because this is our centre. squared plus y minus 8 squared equals the radius squared, which is 100. So I have going to put lots of this onto Desmos now before you do exercise 6f so we can actually see what is happening here, okay? I have already prepared this and I've got the coordinates here for the circle. I'm going to start off by putting in some of my perpendicular bisectors. So I've got y equals x is the perpendicular bisector of these coordinates that we've got here. The other one was y equals a half x. What was it? y equals a half x plus 12. Has that gone right? I don't think I've put that in right. A minus a half x plus 12. I knew something wasn't looking right about that perpendicular bisector. There we go. This looks like it's the perpendicular bisector of the green one and the black one, which I think is what we did do. And I'm just going to go straight in with what we got at the end. So we got x minus 8 squared plus y minus 8 squared equals 100. And there we go, it is passing through all three of those points, and the centre of the circle is where they're crossing. So it's really nice just to kind of see that all together. You might like to finish off any of the questions that you do by doing it on Desmos and actually visualising what is happening there, okay? So um, I'm going to do some exam questions on a separate video, um, but that's all of the teaching that you need to be able to complete exercise 6F. Okay, good luck with that, guys.